Bir iki belli. Şimdi bunlar caç koltuğu değil mi? Evet. Toplamda iki caç olacak dediler. O zaman bir tanesine ben... Sen observer'sın ya sana özel masaj. Ha? Sana özel masaj. Oğlum büyük ihtimalle bana çeyrettirecek herifler ya. O bakayım. Third'de nasıl Tüp bebek de oluyor. Seks yani bebek. Tüp bebeğin İngilizcesi ne bileyim? Çok fırtınız. Ya Can 
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and dear members of the jury. So, today I would like to define the motion and what it means. What do we mean by the parents' decision over the sex of their children? First of all, the decision to choose the gender of the child before conception through the, the, through the technological means of in vitro fertilization. And how are we going to achieve this with, with the modern, modern means of society today? So, how do, you want to, how do we want to confine the motion as, as, the, as a team today? First of all, we do not need a sex change of the child after birth. This is the first confinement we'd like to make in this debate. Secondly, and we do not mean the late abortion of a child due to the selection of its gender. For example, if a family, uh, if a certain member of the family is pregnant with a boy, after a certain amount of time, they want to have an abortion over the, over the legal amount of time that is uh, confined for the abortion status. Um, we will not allow the abortion of the child and then the conception of a new child due to the expectancy of a different gender. So this is the two main confinements which we want to make in this debate today. And also, plus, uh, and in, in addition to this, we do not believe that re the religion, if religion is an obstacle in this debate, due to the, or a viable <coughs> argument in this debate, due to the fact that we're speaking on a more global scale, and we're speaking for every society in general, due to the fact that this motion is not confined in that way. So, today, ladies and gentlemen, what do we mean to achieve? First of all, we want to achieve sufficient family planning, ladies and gentlemen. What do we mean by sufficient family planning? First of all, Families like to plan themselves up. They they like to plan how many children they want to have. They like to plan. Uh, they would like to plan if they had the means of. They would like to plan which gender the children would be in, and they would like to make decisions on behalf of the family due to their econo socio-economical status and other means according to their beliefs and religion and etc. So, basically, ladies and gentlemen, here we want to say we want to achieve a, a, a society where the family has the right to make the right decisions for, for uh, the family's welfare and for the child's welfare and how they want to raise their family or uh, continue on in the next generations. So this is the first point which we want to achieve. Secondly, we want the reduction in amounts of ch illegal child abortions due to the gender of that child. For example, if there is a, child, uh, a woman which is five months pregnant, she can't have an abortion legally. Uh, and if the child is an unwanted gender, she will do, go through any means ne necessary to illegally abort this child. So why is this important, ladies and gentlemen? We think that this illegal act is inhumane and on our side of the debate today because we want to lower the amounts of illegal abortions in this debate. This, uh, and not completely abolish them due to the fact that we know that humans have, any, uh, they have means to do so, but we want to lower this by a drastic amount on our side today. So. The final, and the final two and most important points in this debate, and our achievements or our goals, is the amount of neglection that children face due to their genders. For example, if a family neglects their child after it's born due to the, due to the fact that they didn't, uh, they didn't want a daughter, for example, they would neglect that child while it's raising it due to the fact that they think that it is not viable, to, that it is not their viable choice, or they did not get the right choice. That's all they So problem. you want to say that parents don't love the children if they have the, uh, the false gender? I'll get the point I get back right now. Well, here we want to say that families have objective views on their children. Um, they are sub subjective views on their children. Whilst doing family planning, they don't have the choice on what gender their, uh, their child is going to be. So, due to this, if they do not want a boy, for example, in rural, rural societies, they, there is less demand for uh, ch female, female children due to the fact that they can't comply with the family's needs due to the fact of the occupation and the socio-economic state of the family, they will, they will uh, neglect the child due to the fact that it's a, it's a girl. This happens in many, many rural, rural societies and rural countries due to the fact that um, the neglection in this state is based on a, on, a family, on a family status and the family's beliefs. So, to prevent such neglection, we should allow the parents to choose the gender of the child so we can have a more sufficient or a more uh, positive support in the, in the child's life. This is, this is one of our main goals. We don't want the children to be neglected, ladies and gentlemen. So, and my second speaker will expand on this point. So, what is our final and one of our most crucial goals in this debate? We want to minimize unstable families, ladies and gentlemen. For example, the socio-economical state of the family may require it to have a boy to continue on the family business. For example, if they are if they live in a rural rural society, they will have, go through means uh, they will go through means to live off agriculture and other more physical labor jobs and etc. So they would have more demand for a, ma a male child due to the fact that the male child is more physically capable or more physically able than a female child. In their belief, we do not make such a statement. So basically, here. 
I'll take your point in a second. So here we have the fact that these people want a boy child, for ex in the example. So in rural societies, this, such, this sort of a demand would decrease the amount of children that they make. For example, there is a risk or a chance, in other words, there is a risk, there is a chance that they will have five daughters before they have one son. So instead of having six children as a collective family and having to support for them economically one by one, they will have, they will have the choice to make a son on their first child. So therefore, they will first decrease the amount of economical support they'll have to give to the child, increasing the life standards drastically by one six rather than uh, by, rather than having one sixth of the life standards for one child, they will increase the life standards of that child by a great amount, positively affecting the child's life for his future well-being and for the family's well-being. And of course, they won't have an excessive amount of children, <coughs> causing unstable or, in other words, unprepared families. Yes, I'll take your point. And so you would say that um, boys are more worth than children and girls. I get your point. We said that this is not our statement. We say that many families have such beliefs. We see this in rural societies, and we also see this in many, uh, in many socio-economical states or beliefs or religions. This is actually uh, a confinement or a social belief that families have. We do not say that a girl or a boy is better than each other. We keep them on equal statuses. But in this debate, we see that families have preference over their children's gender. They see one gender more viable or more compatible than another gender. So in this case, don't you think that the excessive amounts of children that they create, decreasing the life standards of these children, and not being able to support them in a positive way, uh, I will not be taking any more points, um, will do more harm to the child's life and for the child's future, rather than uh, just making one child due to, on, based on the decision of the family for the collective well-being of that child, ladies and gentlemen. So we want what's best for the children, what's best for the family, and the continue, continuation of this family on other statuses. And we, as Team Proposition, want to challenge Team Opposition to prove to us and the dear members of the jury that, uh, that one, the choice of the, this child gender will actually alter the male-female female ratio in society, causing a descent uh, or uh, causing drastic detriments to the social structure and social structure of society itself. So, uh, we think that if they answer this challenge, they have won this debate as side opposition. But we think that if, we an if they leave this question unanswered, they have lost a crucial point in this debate. So, in general, we want them to prove to us that what, A, this will cause detriments to the social, social structure, and B, that it's not for the welfare of the child for his gender to be chosen before birth. And as we state, ladies and gentlemen, in this debate, we think that everything is based on the decisions of the parents before birth. What prevents a family from making such a decision for the welfare of the family, for the welfare of the child, and for the welfare of society? So in general, ladies and gentlemen, we stand for this point. We want to allow parents to make the gender decision for their, before their children. Thank you very much. Speaking time was 7.30 First of all, we accept the definition uh, that it means to choose the sex before the child is born. So I will talk about that being able to decide uh, sexes is against nature and how this development could go on. And our second speaker will talk about the possible unequal balance of male and female population in several countries. But before, I will have a closer look at the proposition's arguments. 
So they announced that most people want to plan their family. They want to plan how many children they have and how they will grow up. And this is right, it's natural to plan, okay, I want to have three children, but it's not natural to plan which sex those children will have. That's against nature. And it's not better for a family because parents who love their children only for their sex aren't real parents. Because usually parents love their children just because they are their children. Also, if they won't be neglected because of the gender, they will be neglected, neglected because the parents can't care for them. They won't say, oh, because you're a boy or you're a girl, I won't love you enough. And where well, many families think that boys is more worth than a girl, but that's only in different countries and not in all. And that would make an increase of an uh, unequal balance of sexes within the nation. And that's bad for a society. So uh, since, mo since more than 50 years, we were fighting for gender equality, and now we say that it should be possible to decide about sexes. Is that right? Is that what we want? So, well, as I said before, it is against nature to decide about whether a baby will be boy or girl. Sex of people is no illness, so it actually doesn't make any difference if it's girl or boy for the people or for the parents. So we're not, uh, we're not produced, also we're loved. And because usually every parent loves uh, their child because, just because it's their child, no matter of their, of their sex. And of course, mothers would maybe say, yeah, I would prefer uh, a girl because I could do her hair or things like that. Or men would say, I would uh, prefer a boy because they could teach him to play football. But in the end, they love their child, no matter if they're boy or girl. And the baby is not the result of an artificial production of girls or boys. It is the result of love to people. So artificial implantation to produce designed human, is that what we, what we want, what we want our society to be? No, it's not. A baby shouldn't pro, uh, be produced after wishes of parents. Because think of it, what we, think of what we're talking about. We're talking about people who, yeah, human like you and me, if we're not clothes or furniture or technical equipment, yeah? Um. You stand in the defense that uh, nature will lose its balance, or nature needs to be kept, kept in balance due to this gender equality in uh, societies. But how do you use gender as a defense, and how do you think that the gender cho choice of children would do detriment on nature itself? Uh, because it, it's, not, it's not natural to say, a child, uh, I want to have a child which is a boy or a girl. It's just against nature. And if you say, uh, yeah, because in several countries, as our second speaker is going to say, there are differences between rights of girls and boys. And if you, for example, say, I want a boy because, yeah, he could have a better future. We, most of the people will say, I want to have a boy because, yeah, it's just better for this society. And then there will be, yes. Uh, I would like to ask, you have said that families always love their children. Now, why do we have cases of abortion, abandoning young, giving children to other families? Because that's the, if we have these in, in like societies which don't kill children because of their agenda, it's just because, it's just because they maybe can't care for them, they don't have the money to care for them, or they yeah, just think they're not able to care for them. It's not because we say, I don't want a boy or I don't want a girl. That's not